myself and E are not financial advisors. So whatever we're no. going to be discussing right now, just, you know, just take it as uh, infotainment, shall we say. Now, I am not uh, too up to date with stocks and shares, but obviously I do uh, take a look and uh, some interest. This is the craziest I've ever seen it. Yeah, it has been. It's been a very interesting ride uh, because I part of me feels like I missed a rush and I could have tapped in to make quite quite some cash because uh, I saw people talking about this last week with GameStop and I was like, come on, no way. Like, just go away. I didn't pay yeah. attention to it because GameStop as a company is a company that I've wanted to just go away. You know, as, as gamers in the U.S., if, if you live in the U.S., you're listening to this, you know, GameStop is a company, you go and trade in your, your old consoles and they'll give you like, you know, $20 for it. And you're like, yeah. I paid $300 <laughs> for this console. Yeah. So, I mean, what, it's what on the really decline. happened? It's, it's, on it's, the it's been on the decline for quite some time because we're all moving to digital. Most people these days, yes, you'll get occasional people getting physical copies, but the time of going in, trading in your old games physically uh, and, and getting you know actual physical discs of discs. games is, is, is very, you know, last 10 years sort of uh, thing. And now it's mostly, you want a game instantly, you want to download it digital. And that's obviously been quite a decline for GameStop, I would say, over the uh, past few months and years. Yeah, um, there's a YouTuber, uh, and I'm sure if you're watching the YouTube video, but if you're listening, uh, definitely check it out, uh, who did a good breakdown of everything that's going on, kind of summarizing that for you guys here. Yeah. But, you know, GameStop as a company, like Safsa was going through decline, uh, uh, but somebody on Reddit through something called Wall Street Bets, that's their subreddit, uh, noticed that the, the stock was being highly undervalued. He's like, yeah, it's not doing well, but people are just kind of pushing it to the ground a little bit too much, right? Mm -hmm. um, and because he had seen that, you know, GameStop had announced uh, that they partnered with Microsoft. Microsoft was going to partner with them to use their stores for certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, also, a big investor also invested a lot of money into GameStop because he felt like, mm -hmm. again, too, he was undervalued. Uh, and this, so this subreddit found out that uh, GameStop as a stock was being shorted. Now, the briefest definition that I initially understood of shorting was simply, you think a stock is not valued where it is. And so basically, you're betting that the stock will go down in price. And basically, yeah. if it goes down in price, you win. But yeah, what it really is, 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 is yeah. a little bit more than that. It's basically, you're betting that the stock is is going to be sold at a lower price. You basically borrow the stock from somebody else to sell at that mm -hmm. price so that when you make the money, you can now pay off the original person. Or somebody gave the best example. It's like if you have a roommate, you have two roommates. One roommate comes back home, is completely drunk, and it's like, hey, do you have Gatorade? And you're like, no, I don't. It's like, just get me Gatorade. I'll give you five bucks. And you're like, oh, okay. But your other roommate who is a sports star has tons of Gatorade. You call that roommate and say, hey, can I get your Gatorade? I'll give you a buck for Gatorade because that's the cost of Gatorade as it is. So your other roommate says, the sports star says, yes, you pay $1 for that Gatorade, you go over and sell it to the other roommate for five bucks. That is literally what you're doing. That's what it is. Right? But, it's, but it is essentially gambling, right? Because <laughs> you could... You know, you could easily, well, as what's happened right now, which you're going to carry on explaining, yeah. it's very risky. Um, but a lot of a lot of companies actually thrive on on short selling because short selling yeah because because there's, there's a there's a lot of money could, that could be made so mm -hmm. what happened is the subreddit realized that they were they were leveraging uh they were over leveraging the the undervalue of the stock so basically they were shorting the stock at a, a value of 140 percent nothing mm -hmm. is valued more than 100 percent so basically <laughs> the sh the amount of shorts that they were placing on gamestop was higher than the amount of stocks available, mm -hmm. which means you're in a position now that somebody can, so they convince everybody in the group to put their money in and yeah. buy game stock stock. And that increased the price now, which means yeah. that now those guys now are panicking because what they bet for a lower price is going up. And they now have to buy stocks in order to basically clear the, their position. They, they don't have a choice. So, for instance, yeah. if you bought uh, a stock at $10 and you were hoping that it was going to drop to $5, um, so you bought 10 of those. We're going to keep it very simple. So, you, yeah. you, you, you short so you know, you, you, you short sold um, a stock, um, 10 of those. So, it's 100, 
the, the value of it is 100, but you know it's gonna go down to 50. So you borrow that, right? Yep. When it goes down to the value of it all, because it's gonna drop half, goes down to uh, $50, then you buy that stock and then you sell it back. Um, well, you, you give it back from what you lended. So essentially yeah, they, you've yeah. made $50, uh, you know, minus fees, etc. right? Now that's sure. obviously yeah. a very simplified um, explanation of what these lot were hoping to do. However, now if that stock increases 10 times, so if, if, if your stocks, so you bought 10 at $10 each, now those are, you know, th so I mean, you're not, not sorry, bought, you borrowed, borrowed. 10 yeah. stocks at $10 each, $100, but now they are worth $1,000. So now you have basically lost nine hundred dollars and that is exactly. currently what's happening and it's insane, insane. So, so think about it from the exponential value a lot of people were jumping into this right and what you saw was GameStop so between yesterday uh, sorry two days ago and yesterday GameStop stock increased by 154 percent and I remember two days ago it closed at 150 dollars I looked at it and I remember we kind of talked about it at least, and I was like, mm. nah, let's not even touch that. But I looked mm. at it, and I was like, should I? No. And yesterday, it went up to 500 bucks. And like part of me was like, if I jumped in yesterday and I saw, because I was going to jump in for one day, ride the wave, and sell, I would have yeah. made a ton of money. So like a lot of people have. You've heard stories of somebody who put in $1,000 and bought it at, at like, so you just think about it math, right? You bought 50 shares at a th you bought 50 shares so you bought a thousand dollars worth of shares uh, at when the when the stock was priced at 50 bucks so mm -hmm. the amount of shares he has and then it went up to 500 dollars. so it's gone tenfold <laughs> yeah exactly so a, a lot of people like one of the main people in the subreddit basically um uh put in fifty thousand dollars of his own money <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, he's made how much? Like millions, right? Uh, yeah, because he's, he went he's, in he, quite early when it was even lower. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a millionaire. I was listening to a, a sports show, and you know, they were talking about it. This is like a sports show. They were talking about it. And they're like, there was one kid who invested his life savings, fifteen thousand mm. dollars. He's a millionaire right now. Boom. That's, that's what crazy. Is. But but here's the, here's the thing that happened, right? So this happened yesterday. I mean, the big the big boost was yesterday when he you know he went up to about five hundred five hundred dollars for the shares. I think it closed around three hundred and forty after hours. It went to about five hundred. Um, the market was you could see the anger from Wall Street because they got. I mean, they literally got hit in the head. I mean, they got caught with their pants down because they were over leveraged here meaning mm -hmm. they basically borrowed more than they can actually pay for in this, in this situation. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of there were calls back and forth. But what really happens is that this is the first time in collective history that normal traders or day traders or you could say retail traders is the, the yes. word that's used. Basically, you and I were able to jump in and beat institutional traders at what they do. This happens all the time. Now, mm. a word of caution is, because a lot of people will talk about it and say, yes, you know, you're beating the man and you, yeah. you know, you're fighting the big Sticking guys. Because, the big you know, guy. Yeah, according to some reports, they lost like $5 billion, right? Here's the thing. Some of those, some of, some of those investment and hedge funds are also trading people's 401ks and people's mm. long-term investments, right? Yes. This is how they, they make sure that they triple and they expand those investments quite well. Mm. Now, you know, this could be affecting somebody else. So the thing is that as while some of us are doing well, and I'm really happy for the guys who found this and they were like, yeah, we're going to just, we're going to do this. We're going to do what they do to us normally. Essentially, yes. Happens, tables of ten. Right? Mm. Yeah. Um, but also remember, they were doing this to us using other people's money, aka mm. maybe, you could say maybe it's, it's, it's union workers out in, on the West Coast of the U.S., that's mm. the hedge fund manager who's, we don't know where it's from, but yeah. those are the complications where when all the dust is settled, you're probably going to hear a couple of months time that some 401k lost like a billion dollars out or, oh, or wow. something, you know, or, yeah. or more, or, you know, stuff like that. So that's so, where, where the caution is, I would say. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. So there's a couple of things that I, uh, you know, being somebody that's uh, a noob to all of this um, that I, I want to say. So eventually... Because, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people right now that are thinking, oh, I should step in and I should get some stock, right? Um, what would your advice be? To, because the way I see it is somebody that is a noob, this is not investing. 
this is gambling right now because it's very high risk right now because it, it eventually GameStop stock is going to hit its peak. People are going to start dropping it uh, on whatever rate that uh, these uh, short sellers actually have to buy back at. It's going to bring it crashing down. Yeah, yes. So so here's the thing, and it will, this actually leads to our next conversation with Robinhood and the, uh, the other apps, is the fact that, number one, uh, this is not fundamental investment. Like Saf said, this is pure gambling, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but gambling where at least in this case, uh, one side has the upper hand over the other, right? It's, mm -hmm. a, it's almost a clear upper hand. Uh, when it comes to buying stocks and investing, do not do this. I will say it again. Please do not do this. Do yep. your homework. Why, um, you know, research and learn. Uh, look at basic business fundamentals for a company. Because you hear a lot of investors the last couple of days were like, why are these company stocks going up? You know, the Wall, the Wall Street Bets uh, group on Reddit focused on, on um, GameStop, AMC, Express, Nokia, Blackberry uh, <laughs> <laughs> stocks that were were undervalued and for a reason because yeah. they are not doing well, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something you should understand. Is like you know, a prime example. Do you want to invest in stocks, right? You look at a company like Apple. Apple yesterday announced a hundred billion dollars in revenue from mm. last quarter. So that's saying mm. like, whoo, okay, Apple is doing well. That's a company that continues to do well. The other factors to look at, but even just in the simple eye test, you go, okay, that's a good company to invest in, right? Mm. Because they're they're doing well. Yeah, you, uh, and long also term. In, as with every term. investment, you you think long term. If you are going to be thinking about jumping in and jumping out, always remember that there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers. Losers. Yes, there's going to be these big corporations that are going to be losing, but there's also going to be lots of regular people who are, are potentially going to put their life savings toward this, thinking that it's at five hundred dollars right now. I'm gonna make you know I'm gonna double it to thousand, but in between something hits, goes crazy, everything drops, and then your life savings are now worthless because you played this very high risk strategy. So again, I cannot emphasize caution enough. This is not it's risky, and you need to fully understand the implications. One thing that I always say, uh, and is advice from lots of people as well, is only invest what you can afford to lose. Yeah, uh, and speaking of price, uh, the price for GameStop uh, has dropped dramatically as well as AMC, um, mm. and that is that's because of different factors. Because one of the things that um, a lot of the short sellers, I mean, a lot of people on, who were betting against the short sellers, were talking about, this was a cascading effect that really would have screwed the short sellers because of how much they had overinvested and be at shorting the stock. It mm. was. They were not so basically because people bought uh, GameStop, the people who started this thing bought GameStop. A lot of people jumped in. They refused to sell. So when you refuse mm. to sell, price goes up mm. and continues to go up. So they were literally squeezing. That's why it's called a short shell squeeze. You're literally squeeze, yeah, because often the squeeze happens. Squeezing yeah. them as much as possible until somebody decides. Okay, you know what? Thousand dollars is pretty good. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's it, yeah. it's it's. I mean, it's very interesting to watch what's happening right now in this day and age of the internet and Reddit and all of that. So we're going to be monitoring this very closely and seeing what happens. Now, as a byproduct of everything that's happening with GameStop and this, the the madness that is the stock market. There's been lots of controversy because we've got certain apps who have stopped selling uh, AMC and GameStop stock, such as Robin yeah, Hood. yeah, yeah, Robin Hood uh, and TD Ameritrade. Fearless. I don't use I don't use Robin Hood, but I use TD Ameritrade. Have halted trading of GameStop, uh, AMC, <laughs> BlackBerry, and all that, which is now causing the price to drop. Mm -hmm. So again, which is something I personally do not like because this is, I, they said they're affecting the volatility in the market. I'm like, no, this is an artificial dampening or putting a stop to uh, mm -hmm. huge losses for big corporations. Because yeah. in my mind, at least for me, 
I don't, you know, volatility in the market is coming from outside sources that have nothing to do with the market. If there yes. was a pandemic, like we, you know, we had, if there uh, was, God forbid, you know, a, a war or a terrorist attack mm. or something like that, those are very key factors where you're like, okay, we got to stop. Like, you know, there's no way. Yeah. We saw that with 9 11. Um, we saw that even with the financial crisis where, yeah, it was caused by, it wasn't caused by the market itself, it was caused by the banks. So they had to mm. stop it because money was just being lost left and right. This, mm. on the other hand, is literally apps. And this is not the SEC or any of the regulatory bodies or even the exchanges themselves. This is an app that, uh, especially Robinhood, which a lot of these retail traders use. Yes. Robinhood is a big app that retail traders huge. use uh, uh, quite a bit. So when, you, when they go limit, it, Robinhood is now telling its users we as, as just just from the action, I'm not saying that's what they said. That mm. we are not with you. Our name is Robin Hood. Again, the name and the action is two different yeah. things, right? It, right? it contradicts. <laughs> it's completely contradiction. And the internet obviously is not going to take this lightly. So they have fought back, and they have fought back hard because they have been rating down Robin Hood. I've just looked at it now. 301,000 reviews on Google Play and it is now at a solid one star. So we're talking over 200,000 one star ratings for the Robin Hood app on the Google Play Store within the last few hours, I would say, right? Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's crazy the amount of people who have just kind of jumped in and, you know, cause it's, you, you, you do something like this, you're gonna get a backlash and there you go. Be, because what it is is Robinhood is messing with the free market, right? Mm -hmm. They've we've been yeah. we've been told we went to college. They told us the free market will sort itself out. Winners and losers, you pay the price for the risks you take. That is exactly. what capitalism has all been been all about. Mm -hmm. And now think about it this way. And our first discussion was talking about GameStop. If I put in, say, I had put in two days ago when I wanted to buy GameStop, even at $150, hundred and fifty, hundred thirty dollars a share if i had put in five ten thousand dollars into gamestop then and then you know as of last night or yesterday it was at four hundred dollars i'm like okay i'm i'm riding this is great and then this morning i can't sell so think i think it. that they're allowing you to sell right now you just cannot buy sorry the options yeah you can't buy and you can't you can't buy options i mean they're limiting option prices and sell but of course that's mm. forcing the price down uh which yes on the fundamental part of economics and the business, that is absolutely correct, as in the, it should come down to what the fundamentals of the company are to, mm. to make more sense. But on the other hand, this is what the market had created, not because um, somebody tricked it. Again, this is Reddit. This was an open forum discussion where people said, hey, let's do this. This was not, because some people were talking about this as insider trading. I'm like, no. They all discussed in open. Like we know it because they left it open. So it cannot be insider trading where, you mm. know, I found something and I quietly came and told Saf. And mm. I mean, even this actually doesn't really work that way, but I'm saying like there was no secretive discussions of anything. Yeah. So so you, again, you're limiting people. I, so for, for someone like me, if I invested that amount of money, I'm going like, oh wow, I'm losing profit. So now I'm, I'm trying to sell, sell, sell. Of course, since it's selling, then prices dropping because there's a flood of, of stock on the market of people mm. who want to sell. So, so they, those, they are artificially those. affecting this now. So what do you think is going to happen to these apps after everything kind of dies down? The Because obviously reputation-wise and this one-star rating is not going to be a good uh, Whoever Whoever is a com competitor of Robinhood is, is take advantage now, honestly. Seriously, yes. Robin Hood just screwed themselves. Like I, I use TD Ameritrade. I use which is doing the same thing, by the way. So I'm not saying I I use that, and I also use another uh, I use another app uh, from Fidelity. Um, but what you, what's going to happen is competitors are going to go up, especially on TikTok, because this has been trending on TikTok for the last couple of days. The other apps who will not, they're literally going to drop ads with people saying, "We're not going to do what Robin Hood did to you. We're not huh. going to." Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to basically steal your money like Robin Hood does and give it to rich people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that, that, that's that's a good example there. Yeah, um, but yeah, absolute craziness. Yeah. Um, 
let's see how it goes. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. It's a perfect opportunity for competitor apps to kind of swoop in and, you know, uh, get get the trust of people who have now completely lost trust in some of these major, major apps. And, uh, you know, that's going to have a lasting, lasting impact on their reputation, on the app ratings. I mean, you know, people who are new to this, if they come in and they see an app that's rated at one star, what is the likelihood that they're going to download it? Even if it's got 300,000 votes, right? If it was like, you know, a, a, a small amount, no, this is serious business. I mean, as far as we can see, they deserve it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that clip. If you want to hear the full podcast episode, then that will be linked down below. And if you want to see more clips like this, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss them. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf Speaks. And I'll see you next time.